Hey, what's up, player? This is Catch22, and welcome to the Sega Holic. This is part three of my PC Engine audio video guide, and here we're going to be testing the uh, prototype RGB amp. First things first, the amplifier IC and header pins need to be soldered to the SOIC 8 adapter. Here is the Texas Instruments THS7314 still in its reel. And this is the SOIC 8 adapter, the 8 being the number of pins on the IC. While these are the breakable header pins. And you just snap apart the pieces you need for the adapter. Before soldering, we need to clean the surface of the adapter for any human or machine oil that may be on its surface. Now we position the IC on the adapter using ESD safe tweezers. If you can, also wear an ESD strap on your wrist to protect against ESD damage, even if the chip has ESD protection. Here I'm wetting the tip to protect from oxidation while it sits while it's heating. This is also to preload the tip with just a bit of solder for the drag soldering that's going to be done. And to make the drag soldering easier, here I'm using a 2.4 millimeter chisel tip which is flat and makes drag soldering a whole ton easier. To drag solder, load the area to be soldered with a lot of flux. The flux helps to flow the solder away from the solder resist area and to the conductive pads and to the pins on the IC. Drag soldering is an easy soldering technique to prevent bridging when soldering pins on small ICs. Now we can take our iron preloaded with solder and just tack that one side of pins on the IC. The soldering here does not have to be perfect, you just want to hold the IC down while you solder other row of pins. If you apply too much solder, like I did there, um, just reapply more flux, clean up the tip from excess solder, and just wipe some of that excess solder away. And now we can clean up the soldering that we did earlier to tack down the IC. Now we can clean this up using some IPA alcohol before we solder on the header pins. Here I'm just inspecting for excess solder or any type of solder bridging. Now use your continuity tester to make sure none of the pins are bridged. Now insert the long end of these header pins into a breadboard to hold them in place while you solder the adapter PCB to them. Now do continuity tests to make sure the header pins were soldered on correctly. Lastly, do the final cleaning with some IPA alcohol along with the toothbrush. Here's both the sink and RGB circuits installed on a breadboard with the inputs hooked up to the PC engine and outputs to the frame meister. We're going to be using the 7314 and the 7316 for the RGB amplification along with both CVBS and C-Sync for sync along with those sync signals either being amplified by the 7314 or 7316 or not being amplified. The best combination turned out to be the 7314 for RGB and a 7314 amping C-Sync for sync. I used an iPhone 6 to record noise levels and picture quality on a Samsung 4K HD TV. The iPhone had its exposure and focus locked to measure again the picture quality of the Frame Meister outputting to this TV. This combination yielded the least amount of noise and no uh, gel bars. 
the yellows and greens were usually the places where you would see um, evidence of gel barring on the other examples. Honestly, this is probably the cleanest video I've seen coming out from the Framemeister and uh, in combination with this TV. Now here I switched out the 7314 for RGB for the 7316. Again, the iPhone 6 camera was uh, exposure and focus lock, so this is the same settings as used for the previous sample. Again, you can see some issues here where you can see faint gel barring. Here you can see gel bars in the green as well as the white. And you can also see gel bars here in the yellow. Bear in mind the results here are with the outputs being processed by a Framemeister. So you might get different results by viewing it on a CRT um, RGB monitor. Coming up are some comparison videos between different combinations of the RGB amplifier and sync. Again, this is the winner where it yielded the least amount of noise and again, no gel bars. In fact, if you use the THS7314 to amp RGB, it doesn't matter what you use for sync, you're not going to get gel bars. Again, just as long as you use AC biased uh, inputs and DC coupled outputs. Again, noise was minimal to non-existent. Also the black frame, excuse me, the black border that frames the video. Um, is consistent in its black level so it does not uh, get brighter or darker in areas. Here's the same setup except we're using a THS7316 to um, amplify C-Sync. Results were pretty similar but uh, I feel it was just a tad uh, noiser. I might be imagining things so that's why we have this video and you can make your own conclusions. Again, same, kind of same setup as before, where we have the THS7314 amping RGB, but this time C-Sync is, uh, is not amplified, but is coming straight from the PC engine. Without C-Sync amplified, you'll notice uh, more noise in the blues, especially on the opening screen for the uh, game. Here we're still using the THS7314 to amp RGB, but this time we're using the 
uh, THS7314-2AMP uh, CVBS instead. Again, CVBS is composite video. And what's surprising here is that it doesn't yield any uh, jail bars and the picture was surprisingly clean, but still not as good as the uh, 7314 amping both RGB and C-Sync. Here we have the same setup as before, but this time the THS7316 is amping uh, CVBS. Pretty similar results to the segment uh, that came before. Um, again, I cannot really differentiate between uh, the differences between this and the previous segment. Now this time here we're running CVBS straight from the PC engine as sync. Again, surprisingly, uh, noise levels are pretty low, but not as low as the previous two segments. Um, but again, surprisingly low, and also no JBR still. Now here I'm using the THS7316 uh, to amp RGB and the THS7314 to amp C-Sync. Again, I would not recommend you using the THS3, excuse me, the THS7316 to amp RGB. Again, you'll get the jail bars. Again, this is in context with using the Framemeister as you might not have these issues using an RGB CRT monitor. Sharpness wise between the THS 7316 and the 7314 is very negligible. Um, again, like I was standing about a foot from the TV. I could barely tell the difference in sharpness. And again, most of the times you're going to be not gaming, um, again, a foot from your TV, but rather three to five feet away from your TV. Again, this is in context with your using your frame meister along with a big HD TV. The last two segment videos are going to be comparing uh, audio. One of them is uh, straight true audio and the other is with the uh, audio line capped with a 10 microfarad capacitor. Again, the rest of the examples are going to be um, with the THS7316 amping RGB, except for the last uh, two segments, which is a straight true CVBS or composite video. And so I, I repeat myself once again um, in saying that uh, anytime RGB was amped by the THS7316, it yielded gel bars. But um, I encourage you guys to watch all these segments and make comparisons for yourself and draw conclusions uh, with your own observations. Hopefully uh, the MPEG compression doesn't take away from um, seeing some of the gel bars here. Um, I encourage you guys to actually view this on um, an HD TV. Um, what I captured here was a 1080p footage, which is not uh, resized in any way uh, with Final Cut Pro. All adjustment settings like color, contrast, and sharpness were consistent throughout uh, during both capture and processing. With that said, I'm going to run. Um, if you have any questions or comments, uh, please leave them in a comment section below and uh, again try to use the comment section in videos uh, that way I can see any updates as far as any type of messaging goes. In the final installment of uh, this uh, RGB um, amplifier build for the PC engine uh, we're gonna be doing the final build so uh, yeah that's gonna be the next video. Aloha and see you guys later.
Round one.